When it comes to archetypes in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, for every really good meta-defining archetype, there's like three or four really awful archetypes that lead me to question the sobriety standards of the design team. The Pyramid of Light archetype is an example of one of the latter archetypes, and for unknown reasons, I revisit this miserable set of cards at least once a year and attempt to make them even semi-playable in today's competitive landscape. Unfortunately, it's about that time again. However, in my most recent search for cards that have any level of synergy with these four cards that hardly have synergy between each other, I was delighted to find that there are more options in making this deck viable than there ever have been. And not only that, but our new options are actually pretty decent. Today, we're going to look at 25 cards between the main and extra deck that I would clumsily compile in my latest attempt to make the Pyramid of Light a Tier 1 meta contender. So, what are we working with? Starting with the namesake of the deck, Pyramid of Light, a continuous trap card whose only effect is that if this face-up card is removed from the field by any means, all Andro Sphinx and Sphinx Talea you control are banished. Every time I reread this effect, I'm almost reminded why trying to make this deck good is a bad idea. But I'm also one to throw stones in a glass house, so here we are. Andro Sphinx and Sphinx Talea are both level 10 light beast effect monsters with opposing stats who each carry the effect to special summon themselves at the cost of 500 life points if you control Pyramid of Light. Which is actually fantastic for a quick 2 material rank 10 monster. And while we could stop right there and say that's how we make them playable, I want to take it an entire 10 steps further and incorporate these cards into a fully functional engine. If you have all of these cards, they're not the worst thing ever, but how do we get to them in the most effective way possible with our options from today's massive card pool? Side note, they also have a bossier boss monster in the form of Finian the Great Sphinx, but because we're trying to give this deck its best shot at being meta relevant, we'll be ignoring that card like I ignore my ex-wife when she asks for help paying her bills. Searchers for continuous trap cards are few and far between. Not every pink surprise can be found with trap tricks, but I found the next best thing. Sacred Beasts. You heard me right, we're bringing even bigger meat to the table. Awakening of the Sacred Beasts is a continuous trap card who has an entire novel's worth of effect text, but the only one we care about in our endeavors is the last effect. Once per turn, if you control a level 10 monster, you can add one continuous trap card from your graveyard to your hand. In combination with cards like Foolish Burial Goods, which can send Pyramid of Light directly from deck to grave, as well as Metal Reflector Slime, Putting an easy level 10 body on board, this is our most generic means of a proper search for our key card. Booby Trap E, a normal trap card, bolsters a similar effect. At the cost of a single discard, you can set Pyramid of Light, which could also be discarded by this effect, to set a continuous trap card from your graveyard. And you have the added benefit of being able to activate that set card the turn you activate your Booby Trap E. Quardon, the clear sighted, a level 4 Earth Fairy effect monster, also offers the exact same effect as Booby Trap E, but applies on Normal Summon. So, this would probably be our most direct means of playing Pyramid of Light to get the gears turning. Quardon also offers protection to your face up trap cards if sent to the graveyard, and I feel I should make the point that that can be from anywhere. So, if you were lucky enough to already have Pyramid of Light in play, and you send Cordon from deck to grave with, say, Foolish Burial, you're on your way to great things. And in regards to protecting your very much vital continuous trap card, Imperial Custom is a continuous trap card which protects all face-up continuous trap cards from destruction except itself. Sadly, you can only control one. Beggars can't be choosers. We've established some decent support for Pyramid of Light, but what about our monsters? It's not like the movie where we get to just freely destroy the god cards, so we need to get our boys over to crack a few cold ones before we make some bad decisions. This round's on me. My first two options offer the most effortless searching for both Andro and Talea, but I'll be completely honest, I'm not entirely sold on them. Let me know what you think. Melfi Caddy and Kitty Tail Mystical Beast of the Forest, both level 2 Earth Beast Monsters. Melfi Caddy can return itself to the hand in response to your opponent normal or special summoning, or targeting it for an attack to search any beast monster from your deck. Kitty Tail allows you to search any beast monster from your deck if destroyed by an opponent's card. I'm not sold on them only because they're a bit slow for the modern game, but on the flip side, 
This deck relying on a continuous trap card is also slow, so I can't discount what these two cards offer. The next monster fits better in the wheelhouse of the deck as a level 10 water zombie, which is weird to say out loud. Finis Terre, Tower of the Necro World, which can special summon itself if you control a level 10 monster. And aside from a free body, if it's sent to the graveyard, it protects a face-up card you control from card effects for the turn. Brilliant, because I just so happen to know a fragile pyramid that needs all the protection it can possibly get. And our last five entries for the main deck come from an archetype that I was in no way familiar with until doing the research for this video. Nemleria. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sweet Dreams Nemleria, a normal spell card which doesn't have any relevance to the Pyramid of Light cards, but gets us to the one Nemleria monster that we need for this deck in the best way possible. Add one Nemleria monster from your deck to your hand. I'll take your entire stock! The only Nemleria monster we will be searching is Nemleria Dream Devourer Reveal, a level 10 dark beast which can special summon itself from the hand or graveyard at the cost of banishing three cards from your extra deck face down. Then, at the cost of sending a level 10 beast, how convenient, from your field or hand to the graveyard, you can set one Nemleria trap card from your deck. And this is where things get really, really good. Nemleria Louvre allows you to special summon one Nemleria monster or level 10 beast monster from your deck or hand in defense position and it's returned to the hand during the end phase, which isn't a problem. And this should be your first option if you need bodies on board. And your secondary option is Nemleria Repeter, a continuous trap card which if you control another Nemleria card, you can activate one of the following effects each turn by banishing the corresponding number of cards from your extra deck face down. For one, you can retrieve any Nemleria card from your graveyard which offers immediate recycling to your search spell. Then, for 3, you can send one level 10 beast monster from your deck to the graveyard to negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls for the turn. Nemleria cards are easily automatic inclusions in a modern Pyramid of Light build. We're doing a lot of banishing from the extra deck though, so what are we going to put in there? Galaxy Eyes Cypher X Dragon, a rank 10 light dragon which takes two level 10 monsters, offers protection to light monsters you control, which Andro and Talea just so happen to be. Number 81, Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora, who needs no introduction, offers a soft once per turn effect protection on a quick effect. God bless. Number 35, Ravenous Tarantula, a rank 10 dark insect which requires two level 10 monsters, offering some potentially major stat increases to your monsters if you're running the Solemn cards and creating a sizable difference between you and your opponent's life points. And in the case of this deck, you absolutely should be running the Solemn cards, and Ravenous Tarantula pretty much invalidates any use of Thinian the Great Sphinx. Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max, another choice for those with a touch of the tism, offers soft once per turn burn damage which this deck appreciates. And lastly, an interesting choice that I found was Centurion Auxilla, a level 12 dark dragon synchro monster which offers protection to your face-up cards in the spell and trap zone, so your Nemrelia cards as well as Pyramid of Light. That's everything I found which could potentially push the Pyramid of Light deck into meta contending status or at the very least a fun rogue option. But now I want to offer you a challenge. Normally, I don't ask for a specific number of likes. I'd rather you drop a like if you actually enjoyed the video, but today, I want to change it up. If we can get this video to 300 likes, I will put this deck together, fine-tune everything, and enter a local tournament with it. I'm up for the challenge if you all are up for helping to push this video. I leave it in your capable hands. But that's going to wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.